Howdy, welcome to Fishtails. I was out at the ranch yesterday, Sunday evening, and it was at the end of about three weeks of colder than normal weather for Texas, and virtually no sunshine. And that's real unusual for Texas. We get 300 days a year of sun, and we didn't start out that way. It was literally two and a half weeks. The sun did not shine. It was rainy. It cold. It was cold. We got plenty of rain. Brought the creeks up and everything. But what that set up was out at the ranch on Sunday. The crappie had come up off the or come up out of the deep water and were just near the surface and pretty much like springtime when they're in the shallower water on the spawning beds well in this case they weren't spawning but they were in the upper water column where it was warmer and I suspect it was much warmer the water temperature is probably about 45 degrees down at the bottom and you know you get a couple of days of really warm weather uh, down here and the sun shines real good that water will jump five degrees five or ten degrees sometimes uh, especially in a shallow uh, lake uh, bigger bodies of water don't warm up quite that fast but a small stock tank someplace you know a couple acres in size uh, maybe this one Lake Mary I guess is about five acres but what it does is it sets up for some very interesting type of fishing uh, if you're a fly fisherman you recognize uh, it's an opportunity to use something called a popper dropper which basically you take a popper like this one and you tie a string on the back of it and you tie something like this as a dropper this is just a little clouser type woolly booger type fly and that's tied right behind the popper and when it's going through the water this thing gets their attention and then they come up and they take this it works really well I've caught a lot of fish on it I caught a lot of fish doing that I'm gonna basically just show you how to make one of these things I got a little idea that I'm gonna work on I I want to make I want to have a double dropper and what I want it to do is uh, I want the two flies to hold out side by side so I'm gonna use stiff monofilament this is 12 pound I probably should have something closer to 20 20 pound monofilament would be stiff enough this stuff is not gonna be real stiff but these flies you don't pull them I mean you you pull them and and, and then they sit there popper makes some noise and the, and the flies float down and two of them at a time I can catch two crappie at a time <laughs> that's the theory anyway let me get busy with this all right, and I'm going to pretend like I just tied that fly. This is a very, very small popper, very thin popper. Uh, it is made to just barely float on the surface. And at this time of year, I think smaller is better. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to tie on the back of it. And I'm, I'm, I, what I'm really doing in this video is working out how to tie the two together. And I, I want to make it so that the line does not interfere with itself. This particular fly, real sparse, it's got a, lots of room at the bend of the hook right there. I'm going to tie on to that part there with a special knot. And I'm going to leave the tag in long enough to come back up through here and then through the eye of this thing. At least that's what I think I'm going to do. I'm trying to figure out how to get it so that the the line passes through the body and out the back so it, it's it's in line with the top fly All right, got me a piece of 12 pound mono crappie and bass are not line shy so you can use whatever weight line that you think you you should or need to see now if I can get that through there and then use a needle and pass it right through the center of that foam that way it would come straight out the back of the fly it would it would tend 
not to uh, mess the fly up, the action of the fly. It wouldn't affect the first fly. This thing will float just enough. I think it'll it'll work. Let me see if I can't get it through there. All right, I got me some, got me a needle, regular old big needle, ran the monofilament right straight through it. I'm gonna run it right down the center of this fly. Oh yeah, that worked. All right, now we got that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and tie a regular knot onto this thing, onto this fly. Well, the biggest reason I'm using 10 pound or 12 pound test line is so that I don't have to use anything else but this. It is heavy. Now I'm going to split the tails. You can kind of see how I'm going to split that tail. And I'm going to do something at the back of this to make sure this, this line does not give this fly trouble. I got about, oh, I got about a foot line out the back. That's what I wanted. Let's see if we can figure out a way to make this not interfere with the fly but stay in line. I think if you get the right kind of knot it will do exactly what I want it to. There we go. There we go. Now it's semi doing what I need it to do. There. Now I've got my tag line that runs right straight through it. It should not interfere with this the action of this fly. Now I just got to tie on my droppers. Alright, I'm going to use a regular improved cinch knot. And I want this one to be about about eight inches from the popper to the first dropper. I'm going to go through this and I'm going to leave the tag line because I'm going to tie that second fly on that tag line. See now how it's got the tag line that comes out sideways? That's what I want. Tighten that down just a little bit. See how that tag line comes out to the side? I'm going to tie the second fly onto that. That way when it's being pulled, I've got this fly and then I've got another one off to the side. Or down below it or off to the side or whatever. I'm going to tie that one on there. Alright, i got my second dropper on there. First dropper, second dropper, and the popper. It's a three fly rig. Shouldn't have any problem throwing it. This fly is probably not going to act real good in the water. If I needed to, I could run that up a little bit further so it stays more in a pronounced, you know, a good arch. I think this is probably good enough to give it a shot. Now just to get time to go fishing. See how that second dropper stays out because the, the line itself is fairly springy. Fairly stiff. There's a popper. Comes along. There's one that they don't like that one. They can take that one. And it is when, when the popper dropper works really good and the crappie are thick in an area you will catch two or even three fish at a time. Doesn't happen very often. Two fish does, but one at a time. Now I went ahead and tied a nice little loop. A loop knot on the end of that. That'll make it, I'll go loop to loop on my fly line. Trim these things nice and tight. Anytime you're throwing three flies at a time, you have to expect some tangles. But I believe this 12 pound test is stiff enough that it shouldn't tangle up too often. I guess the only way to find out is to go fishing. 
We'll see if we can't make that happen. Well, there you have it. That's my popper dropper combo. It's easy to do. Just rig up three flies or two flies. It's probably better to have two. Uh, less of a chance if it'll tangle. If the crappie are near the surface, this thing will also work on bass, but primarily this is after crappie. If they're near the surface, they'll, they'll pick it up. And you honestly don't need a lot of flash in any of these flies. They will uh, work just as, as long as they look like a little bitty bait fish, they'll eat it. Crappie, when they come up out of that deep water, they're hungry. And they get into that warmer water and their metabolism kicks in. And they're looking for something to eat. And you ought to give it to them. It's the only way you're going to catch fish. Thanks for watching. Y'all be good. Bye.